I'm Anna Arison, Editor-in-Chief for Battery Journal. I'm here today at Park Place Gallery with artist Rachel Wren to talk about her work in the exhibition Sense of Place, curated by Michael Holden. Thank you so much for being here today with me. Thanks so much, Anna, for having me. I'm looking forward to talking with you about my work. This piece is entitled Elegy. Beautiful composition. Maybe you can see the grid space, the scaffolding upon which she kind of hangs the composition. Do you want to say a few words about this? Um, so I was interested in exploring a really subdued palette in this one. It's just grays and blacks and browns for the most part. Um, and thinking about sort of the range I could get out of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in the geometry in your compositions, and I'm wondering, do you start with the geometry as a, as a scaffolding, as a framework upon which to hang the rest of the iconology? I usually do start with the geometry. Um, I do a lot of sketching, um, and there's sort of these small diagrams that I use to work out where things are going to be placed in the paintings. Um, that's the part that I think of almost as like a game or a puzzle for myself, how things are going to fit together. Um, so in this painting, the structure of it is an X. There's a line that goes like this, and a line that goes like this, and they cross in the middle. Um, the title of this painting is actually Defenders, and it came from that idea of the X, kind of thinking about something like this. Um, and at the time I was making it, I was also listening to the news of the Lakota um, tribe who was trying to defend their land from the oil um, pipeline that was going to be built through it. So those things come together, um, sort of the content um, and also the geometry or the formal things, um, and I try to just sort of like bring that together when I'm thinking about a title for the piece. Thank you. I know that you're interested in science in your work, and uh, when I look at your compositions, I think about quantum mechanics, uh, unified field theory, uh, and even the theory of everything. Can you address that? Sure. Um, I mean, I certainly am interested in the idea that everything in the world is kind of made up of the same particles, and I think the way that I use the marks in the paintings does hint at that. Um, you know, it's not overt, but it's just like another layer or level to reading the paintings in that way. Um, and also the idea that in between all those particles is space, um, is nothingness. Um, and that that somehow the, the space and the particles together is what makes up everything is intriguing to me. Yes, and, and that space is as much stuff uh, and substantial right. as, as any other stuff or right. any other uh, thing that exists. Uh, and you've unified it all in the scaffolding of, of the grid um, and there's a really interesting pull between the organicism and the geometry. Um, can you talk about uh, your experience uh, now as a city dweller mm -hmm. um, and your relationship to nature and your relationship to the grid and has that changed um, living in the city? Yeah, I mean, I think that living in a city gives me a little bit more to push against or to kind of um, try to overcome in a way when I go into the studio to make these paintings. You know, nature is not immediately accessible, um, but it also means that I have to find the moments here in New York, you know, that are beautiful. And I do all the time, you know, whether it's um, colors in a sunset or even just the way the edge of a tree looks against the sky um, or some, you know, leaves on the ground. Um, anything like that can sort of be a trigger to making the painting in terms of the way that the color for a painting begins. And so I would say that it's my relationship to nature really informs the color choices that I make. Um, and they usually start from a very particular memory. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other part of the painting, which for me is the structure, is much more dependent on the grid. Um, I can't say if that comes from the city, but it kind of makes sense that it would. Um, and those two things working together, I feel like make something strong. Um, I think one without the other wouldn't be quite as interesting to me. Yes, yeah, I think very much so. They exist in a really wonderful state of reciprocity together and they inform and enrich each other in a, in a very satisfying way. Um, 
is there something political about uh, the nature of your paintings in terms of addressing nature? Um, also, that nature or this forest, as I see it, seems as though it is kind of floating or maybe being submerged underwater or it has this kind of um, this this liminality to it where it's existing but it could vanish uh, in a moment. Yeah, well I mean we are living at a, a strange political time um, and I think that can't help but affect the work. Um, for me I certainly think about all the environmental catastrophes that are going on. Um, I wouldn't say that sort of overtly in the work, but um, what I do want to give people a sense of in my work is a feeling of what it's like to encounter the landscape and to be immersed in it. Um, and that hopefully having that feeling of sort of slowing down, quieting down, um, breathing a little bit more deeply, which is something that I get in nature and is something that I hope viewers will get when they come to my work, that that hopefully makes you think about Kind of the world around you and how important it is to maintain that and protect it. Very nice. Um, and um, just two more questions, but there is a very interesting <laughs> sense of time in your compositions um, and there is a sort of a gestalt that occurs in your work and yet um, it's thwarted a bit mm -hmm. because you, it unfolds uh, in kind of a time-based way, uh, I think maybe because of the constructed marks that you use, and, and I'm reminded of maybe your process and your involvement and the duration. Yeah. Can you address the issue of time in your work and space? Yeah, I mean, you know, the paintings take a long time to make. I work on a few at a time, um, and they sort of build up over months, I would say sometimes years, um, and it's just a process of layering really um, mark by mark, color by color, pretty slowly. Um, I never know what all the layers are gonna be. All I can do is kind of put the first one down, react to it, then react to that one, and kind of keep going in that way. Mm -hmm. And so I think that all the time that's put into the painting somehow comes back out. For me, that's the magic of painting that I feel like you can't really explain, but it just happens. Um, and so I do hope that they have kind of a sense of time, a sense of slow time in them. Um, and I think they do need to be looked at slowly. Um, you'll get something if you just look at them for, you know, 30 seconds. But if you spend, um, you know, a longer time, I think new things keep emerging. Absolutely. Um, and looking more closely also leads me to really start to engage in a wonderful kind of active optical play with color. Uh, and we haven't really talked about color, but color is incredibly important, of course, to your work. And I'm reminded a little bit, just very tangentially, of, of op art, mm -hmm. uh, also pointillism. But you have very specific marks that are decidedly your own, and you're making your own language. Uh, in, in painting. Uh, can you just uh, address the opticality of your work and, and the palette? Sure. Um, I mean, color is my favorite thing. Um, I love going into the studio, mixing paint, seeing how one color looks like something in one place and looks totally different if it's next to something else. Um, and for some reason, that to me is just endlessly exciting. Um, the color choices I make are uh, kind of related to nature, like I was saying. Um, so there's, you know, there is usually um, a subtlety to them, I would say. Um, you know, I'm kind of interested in what happens when you juxtapose something that's slightly duller next to a similar color that's slightly brighter. It gives you that kind of soft vibration. This painting is called Parallax, and I was thinking about what happens when you walk past a whole bunch of trees. The ones that are closer to you um, look like they're kind of moving at a faster rate compared to the ones that are behind you. Um, and I think that's called a visual parallax. Um, so that's kind of what I was imagining, how these different um, rows or lines of trees would look if you were actually moving in them or past them.
So these are some sketches in my sketchbook. Um, just kind of shows you how I'm plotting things out, thinking about um, all the pieces working together. It always changes when you add color, um, but this at least gives me a sense of the structure. So you're most definitely starting with a, with a grid in perspective, too. Yeah, well, there's sort of a, I guess, a straight horizontal and vertical grid, and then there's also the diagonal lines that connect things. And those diagonals connect things on the horizontal grid so that they're not a true linear perspective, but they give a hint of it. Mm -hmm. And there's also a shifting perspective or multiple perspective viewpoints, it yeah. seems, that, that push and pull the viewer uh, in and out of the composition in an interesting way. It's true. There's not, um, it's not like a single point perspective. Um, there's different ways of getting into the piece usually. And that's sort of the way it is when you're in the woods. You can go lots of different directions. Absolutely, and the sense of space is really different when you're in the woods if you have uh, this kind of uh, really regular spacing of the trees. Um, it's an interesting uh, tool for, for laying out a composition, but you're using a grid to kind of organize nature, which, which is also a really interesting concept in terms of um, I think how nature is often perceived by by humans right. as, some, as something to, to tend or control or uh, something to um, uh, um, try and kind of keep at bay even although I don't I don't think that I don't mean that in a negative way at all but there is there is an effort to um, organ, order nature or organize nature yeah um, wait sorry I totally lost it okay. sorry <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, the order of nature. Yeah, no, I mean, I, um, I don't think I want to answer this. Um, well, like the paintings are certainly more organized than nature is. Um, and that's intentional. You know, I like the idea of trying to fit something that is a little bit more unruly or chaotic into a system. Um, at the same time, I don't want it to be only system. Um, so again, there's that tension or duality between those two things. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, if I, I guess if I only wanted to create nature, I would just go out and paint landscapes. Right. But in that case, you know, you can never make it better than it is. So the lines um, are drawn with pencil and then the um, thick and thinner verticals are made with a um, just a black ink that's thinned out in different amounts to create the different grays. Lastly, um, if you could just talk a little bit about um, where you see your work uh, going in the future. I've heard that you have some very large scale paintings that are in process in the studio at the moment, uh, six feet, maybe larger, but very immersive um, fields. Uh, landscapes. Can you uh, talk a little bit about that? Sure. I have um, kind of a lot of new stuff happening in the studio right now. It feels like a pretty exciting time. Um, I do have some six by six foot paintings that I've been working on. Um, and I've also been experimenting recently with collage. Um, and that's kind of a real also interesting way of like putting color and mark together. Um, and I have some ideas for possible 3D installations, but we'll see what happens with that. Um, so I'm kind of interested in just expanding the language that I've created, um, whether it's through painting or um, in other materials. And I think whatever direction it goes in, the goal is really the same, it's to create this kind of immersive environment that feels um, kind of like a place you'd want to be. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I certainly enjoy uh, the experience of, of durational looking uh, yeah, with your paintings, and um, it's been a pleasure yeah, to thank talk you so much. much. It's been great talking with you, thank too. Thank you. You ask good questions. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks.